this is going to be a bit of a reading vlog because essentially my reading habits have completely changed since having a baby and I struggle with them not quite being what I would like them to be, not being able to read as much as I would like in the format that I would like. I also see a lot of people online reading many, many, many books a year and I want to read all the books. I want to read all the books, I do. But realistically, I just can't. And so I've had to adapt and change not just my actual reading habits, but my reading mindset a lot. And so I thought I would take you on a realistic month long reading vlog of like actually what gets read and how. And maybe I won't even finish a book in this video. Like I don't even know how this is going to go down. I just wanted to show you the reality of it. So it actually happens to be right now the first of a new month. And I have been tracking my reading in the app, The Storygraph. And never before had I actually like tracked my progress in books, like pages read or minutes listened to. I just always just did like start date, end date. And then like my stats would just show me like in what month I finished the book. But I realized because that's not how I'm like reading anymore, it was more accurate for me to actually track the pages and the minutes because that would actually you know, show the reality of it, especially because one of the things I've really let go of this year is number of books read. And I have been listening to some monster long fantasy books. Like I've listened to all of the current Stormlight Archive books that are out by Brandon Sanderson. And each one of those books, I think there's four of them, are like 45 to 50 hours long each. And I've listened to them all. So I'm not finishing books every month, but I'm still like listening to a lot of books every month. So I thought before we start into the like reading vlog of like what I'm going to be reading this month, I thought we'd take stock of where we're at in this year so far. So I updated my story graph stuff last night and actually even after I updated them, I finished a book. I finished a book. I finished reading The Wife by Meg Wallitzer. This was recommended by my friend Lena in a video that she did about books that you can read in a day. How long did it take me? About three weeks. It's due back at the library tomorrow. So good timing. But I would just read this in the small chunks of time that I got in the evenings after Rowan went to bed. And then occasionally if I was on the tube for a work thing or a non-baby thing, I could bust this out. Because I can't read a physical book when I'm on the tube with the baby. It's just, that's just not, that's just not. But yeah, it took me three weeks to read like 200 pages. That's where we're at. But then also I have been listening to Juno Dawson's Her Majesty's Royal Coven. I was basically sold because Nicola, surname I can't pronounce, from Derry Girls and Bridgerton narrates it. I'm in. Very much enjoying and also hopefully going to be going to the book launch for the second one in the series next week. I've started listening to Blonde by Joyce Carol Oates, also recommended by Lena. Basically I just, I read a lot of things recommended by Lena. I was listening to it but then stuff was happening with Rowan so I'm not entirely sure how much of it went in so if I do want to continue listening to that I might just have to start again. And then Gwen and Art are not in love. I started reading that on the tube home from the book launch. Lex Croucher is a friend of mine and then I've not been able to pick it up since. It is YA, but it's long, but that's gonna be one of the books that I am gonna try and read some of this month. Will I finish it? <laughs> Unlikely. But let's just have a look at my stats. So these are my reading stats in 2023 so far. I have read nine books, lucky me. And then this difference I find hilarious. I have read 338 pages. I think that's two books. I think I've read two physical books, but I've listened to 236.4 hours. So this is one of the main ways that my habits have changed. I just listen to a lot of books. I've got a lot more time of walking around with Rowan to and from childcare, naps, whatever it is, like to listen to things. My main moods so far are emotional 
emotional and adventurous. And then pace, page number, small books. Audio book length, 71% have been 16 hours plus. There really needs to be another category for this because I feel like my accomplishments of listening to like 40 hour plus audiobooks needs to be acknowledged. Like that shouldn't just be in the same category as audiobooks that are 16 hours. It's a, it's a whole different beast. And then I've listened to two shorter audiobooks as well. And then mostly fiction, one non-fiction and genres. Look at that. Five fantasy books and then literary and then LGBT. What was the one young adult book that I read? Oh, Cricket Kingdom, yes. I read Six of Crows and I was pregnant and then finally managed to listen to Crooked Kingdom recently. Mostly audio, yes, yes, yes. My most read author, Brandon Sanderson. Okay, here we go. This is the graph. The blue one is number of books read. Wait, I read four books in May. I finished four books in May. That's very different. I finished zero books in March, but I read 33 whole pages of a book and listened to, oh God, that's minutes listened, 2,520 minutes of stuff. But like, look at that. In January, I was listening to loads and then like no actual reading. But then in May, look at that. That's this book. That's this book that I was reading. That's why that's higher. Look at that little, little pages read, red bar. And then minutes listened to is like, fairly steady. I can't believe I finished four books in May. But yes, there we are. This is kind of cool that basically so far, all of my ratings have been four and up. And that's because like, I've only read nine books and I'm prioritizing books that I am like fairly certain I'm going to really like. You know, even though I'm not reading a lot in terms of quantity of books, the quality in terms of what I like and my preferences it's high, it's high, so that's good, that's good. Okay, so that is where we are at. I'm going to continue listening to Her Majesty's Royal Coven. I'm almost done with it. I'm like in the climax, it feels very tense. I've maybe got like an hour left to listen. And I think I'm gonna pick up Gwen and Art are not in love. That's gonna be my like evening reading material if I do get a chance to sit down or lie in bed and read a book. I mean, it took me three weeks to read 200 pages, so we will see. But that's it really. After I finish Her Majesty's Royal Coven, I need to make a decision about what my next audiobook is going to be. Am I gonna try Blonde again? Or am I gonna go back to Brandon Sanderson and do the second book in the Mistborn series? Because I listened to the first one. Do I continue with that series? Also this month, I'm going to the Women's Prize for Fiction party thing. I've listened to one of the books that was on the long list that felt like the most appealing to me, but I haven't gone to any of the ones that are on the short list. So I might have a look at the short list again and pick one that seems like it would be most my vibe and listen to that. It's gonna be a fun, anti-climatic month. Let's go. It is a Saturday afternoon. Rowan is down for a nap and so we are doing our hobbies. Dan is playing video games and I am gonna read. I'm a chapter into this. I'm gonna see how much I can read during Rowan's nap. How's your game? Diablo 4, was it? Yes. evening. Last night I finished listening to Her Majesty's Royal Coven as I was getting ready for bed and I really liked it. I didn't love it but it ended on such a cliffhanger that I'm like okay then I guess I'm in. A book by Juno Dawson. I believe it's her first adult fiction and Juno is a brilliant brilliant trans writer. absolutely love Juno and the book is so queer inclusive. It's about a witch's coven that secretly actually works for the UK government and there are also like covens all around the world which is being secret and like having their own politics. There's a lot of like social justice themes throughout the book but playing out in magic politics. I think the reason why I didn't love it and my main frustration with the book is I felt like none of the main characters actually like had any character development, like no arc, like their thoughts and feelings and views and you know, like their own shit that they've got going on was like the same at the beginning as it was at the end. At least that's how it felt to me. And I like a book 
where you have like incredibly flawed individuals and they figure shit out <laughs> throughout the book. Or maybe they don't. But I don't know. The characters were either like super good or super evil and then they didn't change throughout. That's how it felt to me. So it wasn't like my kind of story, but like the plot, the politics. <sighs> but I'm meant to be going to the book launch of the second one, The Shadow Cabinet, tomorrow night, which I'm excited about. But I don't think I'm going to dive straight into that book. I think I want to download the second born book to listen to. But for now, I am reading Gwen and Art are not in love. And I got about 70 pages in last night and I'm just hooked. I'm so in. It's another very queer book. The tagline is the path to true love never did run straight, which I think is great. But it's gay medieval jousting. You've got your princess and your lord and they're betrothed, but guess what? They're into other people. So it's all a ruse and all of our key players and the premise have already been established. You've got to love YA for just like getting to the meat of it as quickly as possible and just taking you along for that ride. I'm very much enjoying. But yeah, it's not often I actually get a chance to just chill out and read in bed. So I'm gonna read until either I fall asleep or Rowan wakes up and I have to go to his room. We're about to leave to take Rowan to his childminders. And so I need to download an audiobook so that I can start a new one on my walk there and back. And we're gonna go Mistborn. And the second book in the Mistborn series is The Well of Ascension. These aren't complete beasts like the Stormlight Arc but this book is 29 hours and 17 minutes long. So will I finish it this month during this reading vlog? Doesn't matter, that's not the point of this. Yeah, I'm excited to get stuck back into this world. Just one day of walking and doing drop up and pickups and I'm already an hour, over an hour into the new Mistborn book. Pretty good going. But right now I <laughs> am off out to Juno's book launch for the Shadow Cabinet and there is nothing like some child-free tube time to get into a physical book. So I've bought Gwat with me and I'm gonna read that on the tube. Sunday evening and so I thought I'd update you on my reading for the week which I think has actually gone pretty well mostly because on Monday I went to a book launch and so I was on the tube without a baby and then this weekend Saturday and Sunday I've been at Eroticon whilst Dan has been parenting so I've mm. also been on the tube a lot without baby this week which is very unusual for me which meant that look how far through this physical book I got Gwen and Art, I'm not in love, and I am 246 pages in. I'm over half, I'm over halfway. Thoroughly enjoying. It's, it's great. It's very funny. The characters are very endearing and charming. Love it. And then Mistborn, book two, The Well of Ascension, which I'm listening to, eight hours in. That's pretty, did I start that this week? No, I thought like you started that week before. Maybe. But, like... 200 odd pages, eight hours in is uh, not even like a third of the way through this book though. That's You're not even a quarter of the way no, through. No, 21 hours left. <laughs> But yeah, no, th this, this month's reading vlog's going well. I don't think it'll be as much physical books next week because I don't have any plans to be on the tube. And it all depends on how Rowan's nights are. And next week we've got guests staying and other evening plans. So yeah, I don't really know how much book reading there'll be. Oh, the light turned off. I need to charge my little portable light thing. Because Rowan's been so much time. Yeah, Rowan, Rowan just plays with it all the time. Um, but the other thing that's happening next week is the Women's Prize for Fiction event, summer party, announcing the winner. So I'll have reading time on the tube to that. Um, have I read any of the shortlisted books for it? No. I read one of the books that was on the long list because that was the one that kind of vibed with what I fancied reading the most. Am I a fraud? Should I really be invited to do it? I'm gonna go anyway. <laughs> Mm -hmm. What are you reading at the moment, Dan? I'm not 
reading anything at the minute. Great reading vlog update. Just... We'll catch up next week, see if you're reading anything. Well, other than the private eye. The private eye, yeah. Well, Dan was the one that got me into the Mistborn books and Brandon Sanderson in general. No spoilers here, but it is nice having somebody that I live with to be able to be like, I'm at this point in the book. And it's very exciting. Like, the Mistborn books as well, each of them so far, you get comfortable in there being like two points of view that you're getting. So in the first book, it's like Vin and Kelsey. And mm -hmm. then in this book, it's Vin and Ellen that you're getting like the points of view of. And then suddenly it'll be like, and here's the point of view from this character. And you're like, what? It's very exciting. <laughs> so I just, just listened to a chapter that had like a new point of view. Oh wait, no, Caesar gets his own point of view in the second book as well. But then, but then it introduces another point of view that you weren't expecting. I'm not going to get more. You never know whose point of view you're going to end up with. Not mine. No. <laughs> <laughs> Ignore the absolute chaos here, but I am women's prize for fiction. Ready. Oh yeah. The winner of the Women's Prize for Fiction 2023 is Barbara Kingsolf. Yeah! How's it, friends? Hello. Um, what are you both currently reading? I'm actually reading a digital minimalism. Ooh. And not being very digital minimal, digitally minimal. You're like, I'll read about it. I'll have you over a bell. It's everything you say. I'm reading a book called Foul Unities about a vegetarian who inherits a chicken farm. end of another week and this week I didn't read as much it has not been as good a reading week just haven't really had as much time and opportunities but I am now 12 hours and 22 minutes into the well of ascension has much else really happened no oh another woman has arrived there's another female character I can't remember if I've said this in this vlog but I keep saying to Dan that there's not that many female characters other than the main character in this book series and it gives very uh, I'm not like other girls vibes especially the first book and it feels like the author's trying to kind of like rectify that a bit in the second book so we'll see where these new female characters additions go like how they function and what they're up to or if they're just dressing and then in Gwen and Art Not In Love, um, I am 333 pages in and you know like in every comedy rom-com vibes there's always the like the big misunderstanding where like a thing happens that drives the two people apart. Well in this case it's like it is Gwen and Art but in terms of like friendship because spoilers this book gay but yeah that's just happened and I'm like how is this gonna get resolved and honestly I like I kind of wasn't expecting it even though like the seeds had been planted earlier but they were planted so well that I was like too busy focusing on the like romances like well they won't they <laughs> that I forgot about this thing that was just like happening in the background and now suddenly it's like what's gonna happen and I genuinely cannot tell where this book is going to end for one that like does a lot of romance and coming of age tropes I don't know so I actually finished Gwen and Art last night. Absolutely loved it. So great. I feel like it was a very slow burn at the beginning and then just that climax at the end just like came out of nowhere and it was suddenly just like so fast and then it was over. <laughs> but I enjoyed and I liked the kind of like alternative history ending because it felt like positive vibes and then you didn't want to just like put a dampen on it and be like, well, this is actually how history went. It's like, nah, 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 fantasy, mate, fantasy, we love it. So now I need to pick what physical book I want to attempt to read next. And I have 
some options. So obviously I'm still listening to the Miss Bourne series, but when I have a chance to sit down with a physical book, I wanna be prepared. So my options are also all very queer. So my friend Callum McSwiggan, his book Straight Expectations, which is another like YA book, um, it Freaky Friday vibes. So like the gay kid in school one day like wishes he was straight and then wakes up the next day and he's straight. And hilarity ensues. And this is the proof. I don't remember what exactly the main cover looks like, but similar, similar vibes. Then if I'm looking for something a bit more adult and heavier and non-fiction, um, The Transgender Issue, An Argument for Justice by Sean Fay. This has just been on my TBR for so long. And, and then it came out in paperback and I got it. And I really want to read this, but am I in the headspace too? I don't know. However, ba -ba -da -ba, just received my friend Jamie's book, The T in LGBT Plus, um, everything you need to know about being trans. And I'm actually hosting an event with Jamie and his wife Shaba this weekend um, in London. And so I do want to read or skim and like get an idea of much of this book as possible before that. Um, but I'm very excited. It's been a while since I've done any like book events. And yeah, I feel like, I feel like as much as I really want to read this, I'm not mentally brain ready, but I, I feel very much in a, still in a like easy YA moves YA. It looks YA, but yeah. So yeah, I think I'm gonna start with this just because the event is this weekend and then we'll see where we go from there. This probably isn't gonna be one that I read from cover to cover, although maybe I will, we'll see. I'm gonna go into it open-minded, but I just wanna get as much of a sense of the book as possible. But look how gorgeous that cover is. Oh wait, look at those books. Da da da. It is Saturday and tomorrow is the Q&A chat thing with Jamie and I finished like skim reading this book I didn't have enough time to like properly read it but very good stuff and I've come up with my questions for it and yeah I'm really looking forward to tomorrow an event in a bookshop in a conversation with another author it's been a while since I've done something like that and I've also made a pretty good dent in the well of ascension i'm over halfway through now but i haven't really had much other time for like physical book reading because and i've started watching breaking bad for the first time and so that's kind of what we've been doing with our evenings and my mum was here to stay as well for a couple of nights this week but dan has decided to play his video game tonight if you can hear clicking next to me that's what's happening i would have been happy watching another episode of breaking bad but dan has decided that he wants to play his game tonight and so then I have to decide what I want to do with my evening and I've got a bit of a headache and so I don't feel ready to like start a new book even though I think I want to read Callum's book next, Straight Expectations. And when I'm feeling tired and headachey like this, I would like just to like watch some YouTube videos, but I don't know if I can deal with the screen. So I think I might just lie down and listen to the Will of Ascension. I think that's all my body is capable of doing right now. It's very warm and there's just been a lot. It's just been tiring, as are most weeks. So I think that's what I'm gonna do. It's so silly. <laughs> oh, I'll soon just go to bed. It's only 10 past eight. Is this not the most underwhelming reading vlog you have ever watched? <laughs> to host Jamie's book event. the final stretch of this reading vlog and things are really kicking off in my audiobook The Well of Ascension but it's taken a while like I am 23 hours into this book and six left to go and it's been kind of slow it feels like it's spent all of that time just doing like the politicking and like laying the groundwork and just yesterday I listened to a bit where like a mystery was finally revealed and it was like big twist and I was literally like walking down the street, pushing Rowan in the buggy, like snapping my fingers, like, oh, it's happening, it's happening. And then it was over. 
and it, it was really satisfying, but like, it was like, okay, that thing has now been resolved, like on to the next. But the thing that we are now onto is like the main thing but it's just taken us 23 hours to get there. And I'm like, what has happened in this book already? Not a lot, not a lot. I feel like it's just gonna cram all of the action into like the end of the book. But we've had a lot of like, you know, character work in the first part of the book. Like our two main leads, you know, they've done some growing, they've done some realizing, they've figured out what they truly want and desire and, and all of that. They've become better people. And now they're off on the mission. Let's go. But it does feel like I've, you know, schlogged to get to this point in the book. Like the book is called The Well of Ascension and we are 23 hours in and we're now only just going off on the mission to go find the Well of Ascension. <laughs> it's fine. I'm still very much enjoying the Mistborn series, but I prefer the Stormlight Archive from Brandon Sanderson. And those books are even longer, but it does feel like a lot more is happening in them. And I'm a plot gal. I love me some plot. Give me plot. I don't think I'm gonna get a chance to read another physical book this month, but this was meant to be a very like realistic reading vlog as a mum, as someone who is working and parenting. Mm. So this is what you're getting. I really want to finish this book this week. I want to see where it gets to. So I'm going to be spending all of my time listening and yeah, it's good. I love it when you get into the final stretch of the book and you just like don't want to put it down or don't want to stop listening, whatever the equivalent is. It's good. So I'm going to crack on with this book, but then at the end of the month, I'm going to recheck in with my story graph stats in terms of minutes and pages and number of books and all of that to see how we did this month. <laughs> oh my God. I was just listening as I was literally just uploading that clip that I just filmed to my laptop and there was a payoff. There was such a good payoff and I literally was just like <laughs> here just going oh I love it when a book does that and especially audiobooks there's just something about it because then I feel like I talk out loud more because I'll literally just be like oh my god and I just had that moment there. There was a character that got introduced, one of our new female characters, the few that there are in this series, god damn it, who got introduced like earlier in the book, kind of, you know, as your classic, like noble girly girl, not to be taken very seriously. But I could kind of tell that the author was like playing into that and making you think a certain way about her. And she was obviously like more deep than that, whatever. And we've just had a character pay off with her as in it has now been revealed that she is going to be also joining our main gang on this mission for the rest of the book. And I am so excited to get the interactions between them all because they've not really interacted or been in the same scenes with each other and I am here for it. I am so excited. This is like maybe more excited for the rest of this book because I'm like, oh my God, the like the character dynamics of like, you know, the team, the heist crew, you know, you son of a bitch, I'm in. It's gonna be good. That was a good payoff. I enjoyed that. This book is really teasing me, keeping my toes, playing with my emotions. So I got very excited about our noble lady character joining our team on their mission. And then literally in the next scene, she's like, thanks for helping me out of the city guys. I'm off this way, peace, bye. And I was like, what? No, I'm not gonna get like wonderful like character interactions that I desired. And so I felt really disappointed and I was very sad. Then the next scene we get a point of view chapter from our noble lady and I'm, I'm in. I think she might be my favourite character. She is amazing. And this part of this book, like every chapter, it's been like revealing this thing, twist this thing. Like this person's allegiance is actually a hit. Oh, you thought this person was this thing? Well, actually now they're this thing and I can't keep up. Like the first part of this book, like the first like two thirds, three quarters of this book was not that vibe at all. It was very slow. It was very like, these are the people, this person bad, this is what this person wants. And there was no like confusion or like 
intrigue, the intrigue level has increased. And as a Game of Thrones fan, oh man, when is the sixth book gonna come out? Do I even dream about it? I'm, I'm enjoying this, I'm enjoying this. This is my vibe, this is my vibe. And our noble lady character is, oh, amazing. Even I underestimated her and I was determined not to, but she surprised me. She surprised me. Can you tell I'm enjoying my book? <laughs> I just got back from dropping Rowan off and finished listening to The Well of Ascension. I just had to like sit here and finish it because it was like five, ten minutes left. So I was starting work a bit late, but that's fine because oh boy, oh boy, the last third of that book was just like twist, twist, this thing, big reveal, this thing. I was like, I could not keep up. It was very intense. I cried at one point. My heart was racing. Oh my God. I'm like so here for book three. Like end of book one, I was like, eh, you know, it's fine. Like there wasn't like enough setup for me to be intrigued, but I was like, I'll keep going anyway. But now I'm like, I have to know. That was good. That was a good experience. And with there only being like a day and a half left in this month for this monthly reading vlog, I don't think I'm gonna start any new books. I need a little break. I think I'm gonna use my like walking and listening time to catch up on some podcasts. But of course we need to run through those stats. I'm excited. I do feel like I read more than I would have if I wasn't documenting things, but not that much more. But I think by documenting it, it gave me like an extra burst of motivation to read when I otherwise wouldn't. But let's see the actual numbers. So we're looking at 2023 as a whole currently, and I've read 12 books. These are the moods, pace, page numbers, long books, long books, audiobook length, fiction, non-fiction. Look at that. We're really having a fantasy in terms of genres. Seven up there for fantasy. And then next is LGBT and literary. Exciting. Format, mostly audio, no surprises there. Most read authors, Brandon Sanderson. <laughs> this is just the year that I'm having. So looking at the year on our fun little graph here. So I did do like a good amount of reading in June, but actually it wasn't as much as in May, although I read more physical books. So like physical pages in June. So that might be why then like my minutes was lower, but apparently May was a bigger reading month for me. And so I was wrong. It didn't give me that extra motivation, but hey, the minutes listened line. Yeah, it's gone up and down a bit, but like it's pretty steady relatively. Cool. And then star ratings. Excellent. Right now let's look at June in particular. So I read three books in June, 432 pages. That would be Gwen and Art and 31.7 hours of listening. And these were the moods, adventurous, tense, mysterious, lighthearted, funny, and dark. Great. Are these the moods that you described the book as, or just like the general moods that Storygraph like has the books down as? I can't remember which way around it is, but that is a fun mix of things. Like especially having lighthearted and funny in there, which would probably be Gwen and Art, and then everything else being quite adventurous and tense and mysterious and dark. Right, pace or medium. I just read one physical book. Uh, audiobook length. Ooh, fitty fitty. What was the shorter book that I listened to? Oh yes, I listened to that one, and that was thirteen hours and thirty six minutes. Ooh ooh ooh. I forgot that that was at the beginning of this month. That feels like ages ago. Oh, and then this month we've had LGBTQIA, fantasy, but actually like two of those books were queer and fantasy. So what ones does it put as LGBT? Yes, both of these, but they're both fantasy. Wait, is Gwen and Art fantasy or is it like historical? Is this fantasy though? Because this is present day and it's set in our real world but with witches. I don't know if they count as fantasy, but they're not being counted as fantasy here. And then the Well of Ascension. But Guat, not fantasy apparently. Young adult, romance, yes, yes. Historical, oh, okay, Guat is historical, there we go. And then contemporary, that would be Her Majesty's Royal Coven. Okay, cool, I understand genres. Right, format, audio print, um, and star ratings, what fun. And then pages and minutes listened over the month. Ignore these spikes because I didn't like put the data into the app like every single day to track 
the exact reading over the month. This is more just like as and when I remembered, usually around like the end of the week, I would then be like, oh, where am I up to? And input that info. But as you can see, this is the Guat reading. And then once, see look, once the Guat reading was done, things really kicked off. Maybe these were Her Majesty's Royal Cover. And then, bam, bam, we get to the end and that's well of ascension. There we go, there we have it. I immediately downloaded uh, Hero of Ages, which is the final book in this arc of the Mistborn series. Um, and it has kicked off straight with action. And you know, I love that. I've got no other reading plans really. The vibe is honestly just once I finish a book, then deciding what it is that I want to read next and like what I'm in the mood for. I just wanted to document this month of reading to kind of share how my reading has changed since having a baby. Lots of audio is the main thing and just reading a whole lot less. And also like the types of books that I'm interested in reading has changed, which is really interesting to me. Like I care so much less about like hitting a certain number of books and I'm just diving into ridiculously long fantasy books because I get a lot of joy out of them. I really, really love it. Yeah, I'm having a big fantasy moment, especially a Brandon Sanderson one since having Rowan. Um, and then the other thing that is different is just the lack of non-fiction. I just have a mental block for reading non-fiction. As much as I keep on complaining about the fact that I don't have enough time to like read workbooks, like all of these like sex and relationships, non-fiction books that I'm so interested in reading and I really want to read, I just have a block. And I know I could listen to the audiobook version of it, but when it comes to workbooks, I much prefer having a physical one that I can like annotate and scribble in because the way that I listen to audiobooks, I'm not 100% concentrating all of the time, all right? Because I'm doing other things, I'm parenting, I'm sometimes distracted and I'm like, wait, what's just happened? But then I kind of like get the gist of it. So it's not the best format for me in terms of my lifestyle currently to listen to nonfiction books that I want to like properly absorb and learn from. So yeah, those are the main changes, really. I would love to know if you are a reader, how your reading has changed, you know, whether you're a parent or not, like if, you know, you've noticed changes in your priorities in terms of how you read and what genres you like to read, how you pick the books that you read. Are you on Storygraph? Do you love the stats? I'll leave the link to my profile in the description so you can follow me there if you want to, you know, keep tabs at what I'm reading. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much for joining me on this reading vlog and I hope you're doing well and I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye!